In a previous video that aired about a month ago, I did a pretty good review, I think I did a pretty good review, of the Barrett MRAD rifle in 300 PRC. In this video, I'm going to be spending uh, more time talking about the 300 PRC and less about the Barrett MRAD. Now, the reason why I purchased the MRAD or chose the MRAD rifle uh, is number one, I wanted a rifle of such quality that it actually exceeded my capabilities. I didn't want the rifle limiting me um, and well, you know, the rifle just uh, doesn't do that well, so on and so forth. You can kind of uh, imagine or probably have had some of those experiences yourself. What I mean by that is the rifle or barrel combination uh, can be a limiting factor to a shooter. And what I have seen over the years uh, with my Ruger Precision Rifle, and it, it's, it's a good rifle, don't get me wrong with that, and I have, have had years of fun uh, with that thing, kind of becoming a better shooter along with the, using that Ruger Precision Rifle. Um, but, you know, some rifles have got a fairly generous chamber. Um, and uh, when I was reloading for that, when I do reload for that Ruger Precision Rifle, and, I, and I'll make measurements of cases before I resize them, I notice that oftentimes that case is quite a bit larger than what Sammy Specs say it should be. And uh, that's not that I have these outlandishly high pressure rounds. No, in fact, uh, my, my rounds are, are kind of in the middle of the min and max range. Now, what, what's happening is that that chamber is out of spec. It's too large. It's a generous chamber, uh, as we say. And what happens then is that cartridge placed into that chamber can experience what we call chamber yaw, chamber yaw, where the cartridge itself is actually sitting a little bit differently inside the chamber. And when that bullet is ejected, uh, it ejects in an inconsistent way. The bullet's got to try to correct itself between that, in that free bore area as it's hitting the lead uh, and then down the bore it goes. It doesn't always work perfectly and that can, I think, help explain some of those flyers that we see on occasion and sometimes a little bit too frequently. The other concern or block that I was starting to experience is that the 308 Winchester, good round, lots of competitions have been won with the 308 Winchester uh, and its derivatives, but um, once you get out to 800 yards with something like a Sierra tipped Match King, um, you're getting into that transonic zone and it's kind of a, it's kind of a crapshoot if you want to call it that about how that bullet is going to travel through that transonic zone. And I've never done well with that. Never had very good luck shooting through the transonic zone. So essentially, I'm limited to an 800-yard shot. Maybe not too much of a limitation, you might say, but uh, for some of these places where I have an experience, uh, have an opportunity to do some long-range shooting around here, yeah, 800 yards is kind of a limitation. So let's say we want to shoot at 1,200 yards or 1,500 yards. Um, that bullet, what kind of energy is it going to have? Well, if we're just putting a paper target out there, it'll have sufficient energy to pop a nice hole uh, in that paper. But what if it's not? What if that target is uh, something else and we want to do more than just pop a little hole in a piece of paper? Maybe we want to get a nice resonating gong hit uh, out there at 1,200, 1,500 yards, those um, weaker or weakened bullets, not quite so good uh, once again. So that's certainly a consideration. So I chose that Barrett MRAD because this is everything I've read, really a, a top of the line rifle, an excellent rifle, maybe not the best rifle ever, but uh, it's right up there, right? So it's going to exceed my capabilities as a shooter 
uh, and everything I can do, everything I can do as a shooter, and well within the capabilities of that particular rifle. Now, in this video, today's video, I'm going to now focus really on the 300 PRC. When I teach long-range precision shooting, and I do that on occasion, one of the things that I talk about is what's called the sweet spot of caliber or cartridge choice. And we can look at a spectrum of caliber choices here, starting over on the, we'll say on my left side here, that is my 223, uh, 220 Swift, 22, 250, things right around there. And on the far end over here, we've got the 50 BMG, the granddad uh, of them all, right? Uh, in between here, we have that sweet spot. And there's a couple of different gradients that are occurring here. One is we can look at the recoil gradient, far left side, almost negligible recoil, 223, 556, very, very mild recoil, great, easy shooting, wonderful type of uh, guns right there. 50 BMG, oh, I've shot 50 BMGs, bolt action rifles. They are what I called a hoot to shoot, but do I want to shoot a lot of that? Not really. Wow, I mean, that is some real recoil on that far end of that spectrum. The other uh, spectrum consideration there uh, is cost to shoot. Very cheap to shoot those 5.56, five, 2.23 two, rounds, very expensive, five, six, seven dollars a round out there for the 50 BMG. Now the sweet spot, this is the next piece. It's not too expensive to shoot. Recoil is manageable. Most folks can handle that recoil. Uh, and the third consideration, the third bit of that spectrum we need to think about left to right is the ability of that round, that cartridge, those bullets to actually shoot effectively at long range. 223, 556, even the 220 Swift that's screaming at over 4,000 feet per second, but that's a 40 grain bullet, not that good of a choice for long range shooting. 400, 500, 600 yards like that. You put a little gust of wind on that thing, and I've done this. I have a 220 Swift. I love shooting that gun at close range, in calm situations. It is what I call scary accurate, but I get a little bit of wind out there, and uh, I, I shot that at 600 yards, 550 yards, I should say. Uh, pretty good sized target. Very windy, though. I go out to my target. I, I really shot well. Shot like 10 shot group, and... Uh, I go up to this big target, not a hole on it. Yeah, that wind blew it. I don't know where in the heck those bullets went. Uh, they, just, they just didn't hit my target. That's real frustrating, right? Really frustrating to have that sort of experience. So that, those kind of rounds are not really capable of that long-range shooting. And if that's your thing, like I love to shoot precision, long-range type of stuff, um, then those rounds are out of the picture, out of consideration. 50 BMG, oh yeah, it can do it, right? 338 Lapua, and so on and so forth. But the sweet spot is 6 millimeter through the 30 cals, right? That is, that really is the sweet spot. 6 millimeter, that's 243 Winchester. I've got a 243 Winchester, and I've shot that thing effectively. 700 yards, one shot, no, actually, two shots, uh, blew up, if you want to call it that, uh, destroyed a milk jug filled with water. Uh, my first shot, um, I could see my round impact just to the left of that milk jug, right? And I said, okay, I'm just going to hold right on, a little bit windy that day, I'm going to hold right on the same place, send it once again, boom, sent it again. I could see that milk jug just blow up, right? And wow, that was fun. That was so cool, right? Six millimeter, 243 did that. 
30 cals certainly, you know, can, can do some pretty long range shooting. But um, now a person could argue that you get into the magnums, well, even the 7 millimeter magnum, the, um, the magnums like the 300 Winchester, 300 Weatherby, and the 300 Weatherby, I've shot numerous 300 Weatherby rifles, I don't know why they recoil so badly. <laughs> they, they really do, they're not very pleasant to shoot. Uh, but then we have, of course, the 300 PRC, the 300 Norma. Uh, you're going to have to have some recoil management skills to shoot those, but I'm, st I'm still going to call them uh, in the sweet spot, uh, but maybe a little bit more on the extreme side, maybe a little bit more cartridges for a person with a little bit more experience on managing recoil. That's also one of the reasons why I chose the uh, Barrett MRAD. It's, it's a good sized rifle. It is 14 and a 0.2 14.2 pounds, and so the weight of that rifle absorbs a lot of that uh, recoil impulse, making it a much more enjoyable gun to shoot. So now we've got a couple of options on the table. We've got those 300 Magnums. These are all capable of really extended uh, or extreme long-range shooting. They're firing bullets that are heavy enough, heavy for caliber, long for caliber bullets, very high ballistic coefficient bullets normally. Uh, and so they will carry out to range with some pretty good energies as well. The, uh, I did not choose the 300 Win mag for a couple of reasons. Number one, it is a belted mag and those are a little bit more tricky to reload, but I'm not too concerned about that. I've been reloading my 7mm mag and 338 Win mag for a long time. Um, never really had much problem. They, they headspace on the belt, uh, which if you're not doing your stuff correctly, can really stretch that case and lead to premature case wear and you end up tossing, uh, tossing that case. I'm, I'll get about five, six, seven loads loadings out of each of my cases and that's kind of it. Maybe that is because um, maybe it is because it's a belted magnum so that we could say that's one reason not to choose the venerable 300 Win Mag, the old 300 Win Mag. But more importantly with the 300 Win Mag is the chamber specs. The chamber specs are, well they're sloppy. They're generous uh, chamber specs with a very long lead, a very long lead, uh, and lots of room for the bullet to uh, move um, in places you don't want it to move and end up inconsistently entering into the lead area and heading down the bore. So for those couple of reasons right there, and especially the latter reason, I'm not interested in the 300 Win Mag. The 300 Norma was really interesting to me. I was like, wow, this is based on 338 Lapua. Not interested in 338 Lapua. I've been around people shooting the 338 Lapua. I don't see them even bring those guns out to the range anymore. They're not too pleasant to shoot. Okay, but 300 Norma. 300 Norma. Wow, what about that one? Well, I learned a couple things about that that really turned me off. Giant case head diameter. And you kind of can't fill it properly with powder. Uh, we like to get about 75%. We like to get a good fill of that case uh, so that when we seat the bullet in, there's not a whole lot of, not a whole lot of shaking going on, as Jerry Lee Lewis might say, or he said there is a whole lot of shaking going on. Anyway, you don't want a whole lot of shaking going on. But oftentimes you also don't want a compressed load. But okay, the 300 Norma has a hard time with that because it's such a large case, large case capacity. And the powders that are available for that really aren't going to do the trick. Uh, the other thing is because of the amount of powder you do end up putting in that case uh, and shooting maybe a 225 or 200 grain bullet, all that powder heading down the bore tends to lead to, and I've heard lots of documentation on this, very short barrel life. 
1,500 rounds, kind of the average. Now you might say 1,500 rounds for a precision rifle, that's not too bad. That's a, that's a lot. I don't think I'll ever shoot that much in my whole life. Well, my Ruger precision rifle today has 1,496 rounds on it. I count from day one, right? If that were a 300 Norma, it'd have been wore out. Almost certainly wore out. Now I'm changing a barrel. I'd rather not do that because, you know, I'm spending so much time and effort finding that bullet, that load that shoots so well in that rifle, and much of that is so particular to that barrel and that chamber um, that I don't want to have to redo that all the time. Oh, yes, I like to fool around and, and oh, I'm going to try that bullet too. And, oh, there's a new one. I'll try that. But um, the 300 PRC should be getting us, giving us about 3,000 to 3,500 rounds before we start seeing uh, barrel wear and throat erosion and to the point where we have to change the barrel. Again, another reason why I chose the Barrett MRAD. If today I just wanted to have a spare barrel on hand and I happen to have about $2,000 laying around, well, what's that, you know, I could buy right now another 300 PRC barrel, just let it sit, and when I need to replace it, I replace it. Or when I do need it, I buy a new barrel. Same rifle, pop the new barrel in, and I am done. So that's great. Another big advantage for the uh, Barrett MRAD. Uh, and again, um, one of the reasons why I chose the 300 PRC. The 300 PRC is based on the 375 Ruger case, um, and it has you know a good size head or di case diameter, but nothing like the size of that 300 Norma. So again, uh, seems to be a real reasonable choice right there. I've assembled an Excel spreadsheet to compare the 300 PRC shooting a 225 grain bullet with the 338 Lapua shooting a standard 285 grain bullet. Now this is a lot larger bullet, but this is kind of the standard for the Lapua and this is kind of the standard for the 300 PRC. Notice that it's interesting, I've got both of them starting out at 2800 feet per second. We're looking at the velocity differences right now. And I use the Hornady Fordoff calculator uh, for all of these calculations. And as we scroll through this, we look at the difference. And here we see that the difference is just 3 feet per second slower for the 300 PRC. I've highlighted this area right down here because this is where both of these bullets at 1,500 yards fall into or move into what we call the transonic zone. That is where they're entering just above the speed of sound, but that's where those bullets are starting to experience the differential turbulence. So all in all, very, very similar um, bullets, very, very similar velocities. Now what's interesting also is how these bullets manage to move through the transonic zone. And notice that uh, the 300 PRC ends up edging out the 338 Lapua as it moves through that transonic zone and goes subsonic. Now let's look at the energy. Now there is a pretty good difference here in energy. Even right at the muzzle, we have 1,045 foot-pounds of energy um, as an advantage for the 338 Lapua. Lots more power uh, from that big round and that big bullet. I have highlighted two spots here again. This is where each of these rounds fall below my threshold of 1,000 foot-pounds. That occurs at 1,400 yards for the 300 PRC and 200 more yards for the 338 Lapua. Time of flight is interesting. I thought there might be some big differences here, but look at this. 
they are neck and neck all the way out to 2,000 yards and in fact the advantage again goes to the 338 Lapua but it's only one one hundredth of a second faster out to 2,000 yards. That is insignificant or inconsequential. The trajectory in mills looking at very very little difference here again slight advantage going to the 338 Lapua but for all intents and purposes they are the same wind drift in mills look at that no difference whatsoever all the way out to 2000 yards that high BC 225 grain bullet really performing super well in contrast or in comparison to the 338 venerable 338 Lapua. The only real difference then is in that energy but even so we have some real good terminal energy right there all the way out to 1400 yards. Now here's another maybe my final consideration or reason why I chose the 300 PRC. This particular cartridge relatively new really um, was specifically designed for extreme long-range shooting. It was designed to satisfy the requirements put out by the U.S. SOCOM and later also by the U.S. Army. And it satisfied all of those requirements for being able, get a load of this, being able to do one-shot cold bore zero hits at 2,000 meters. Now, Probably not a mere mortal behind the, the trigger on that, but, uh, but this cartridge is certainly capable of that sort of precision, that sort of accuracy, those sorts of results. All of this leads to a, an increased potential for the 300 PRC to be a very precise cartridge. And when it's paired with the Barrett MRAD or other rifles of really high quality, you've got a real good combination there. It should be a lot of fun to shoot over quite a few years. These bullets have a very high ballistic coefficient. They um, are running between a, a good bullet between a G1 of 700 to 800, over 800. G1 ballistic coefficient. And this is phenomenal when we think about long range or extreme long range shooting because it's going to retain that velocity and not get us into that transonic and subsonic zone quite so quickly. Well, those are the reasons why I chose the 300 PRC. I'm interested in your ideas, your comments, maybe an argument for other rounds, other calibers, other cartridges, 338 lovers out there, 338 Lapua folks. Go ahead and post those into the comment section below. Might be a little bit of fun talking to you there. Uh, I'm not saying that the 300 PRC is the world's greatest cartridge. No, no, no. There are lots of really, really good cartridges. But for what I want to do, long range precision shooting seems like a very, very good choice. Thanks for watching once again. Take care.